The water bubbled around Naomi before calming down, and the other cast members went silent as well. Francisca de Breath had been watching intently from outside the pool. Realizing that the team's excellent performance was declining, she investigated the situation to find the problem. What she saw made her dive into the water. At the age of 12, Naomi Amani already knew what she wanted to be when she grew up. She had always known that she was something special. Naomi didn't surround herself with Barbies and dollhouses, but was drawn to swimming pools. She knew her future lay within her, but little did she know that she would also try to take her life. Public domain by the time she was 11, Naomi was determined to become a world-class synchronized swimmer. Growing up by the water as a coach's daughter, she had seen all the spectacular things that humans could achieve. She saw that there was both beauty and discipline in synchronized swimming, but as determined as she was to join the sport, her parents were opposed to her participating. Naomi dreamed of becoming a synchronized swimmer. Her parents tried to change her mind by reminding her of the dangers of the sport. She was undeterred and started training after months of begging her parents. It was only now that she understood what her parents meant when they said synchronized swimming was a demanding sport. According to Naomi, three key pillars held synchronized swimming together. The first was mental and physical control over one's body. That meant mastering your breathing, every muscle in your body and your mind. Second, each team member had to work together in a near-blind environment that left no room for error. Finally, the dangers of sport with multiple teammates around, like concussions, were a reality. Naomi finally realized what she had gotten herself into. Naomi trained harder than before, determined to hold on to her dream of becoming a world-class synchronized swimmer, despite all the dangers and hardships. She was soon representing her school at the state level after making her high school's synchronized swimming team. She knew it wouldn't be long before she would appear on a global stage. Naomi's team was a marvel to watch, especially her lively performances. They aroused the interest of notable personalities, which led them to the country's national team. She had reached the place she had always dreamed of, but she had done it at a great cost. Her doctor and parents told her that if she continued with her career, something terrible would happen. Naomi was at the peak of her career, but she had suffered many concussions and other injuries, all of which took a toll on her mental and physical well-being. Naomi pushed harder despite being told to slow down. She would avoid mentioning her injuries to her teammates, her coach or her parents, and eventually got caught up with it one day. Pexels, Cotton Bro synchronized swimming is notoriously hard work. Swimmers push their bodies as far as they can when they are healthy and even when they are sick. Nothing else mattered to Naomi. She just wanted to make her country and loved ones proud. She would do anything to keep it up, no matter what the cost, but it would be too late by the time she realized her mistake. It was at one of the most important artistic swimming championships in the world when it happened. Naomi and her teammates had excelled in their routine. With Naomi submerged in the midst of her routine, her vision blurred. Her burning lungs felt like they were about to burst before darkness descended. The bubbling water around Naomi grew still, the chaos of her cast members stilled. She was drowning. Outside the pool, her trainer Francisca de Breath had been watching closely. Realizing her team's flawless performance was suddenly collapsing, she squinted to pinpoint exactly where the problem was occurring. What she would see would send her into the churning mass of water. Francisca dove into the water in the middle of her team's performance. She had seen Naomi's shadow beneath the bubbling surface. The girl didn't move, her knees close to the bottom of her pelvis, her hands limp at her sides. Francisca wasted no time. She knew the lifeguards around the pool weren't privy to what was happening, as they couldn't tell if what was going on was part of the team's routine or if Naomi was actually drowning. Would Francisca reach her in time? Francisca flapped her arms and legs as fast as she could, holding her breath until she was close to Naomi. She reached out to the girl, grabbed her and swam to the surface. The lifeguards had already jumped into the pool and helped her get Naomi to the side of the pool where they administered first aid. But although they would do everything to revive the swimmer, she would not regain consciousness in the stadium. Naomi was taken to the emergency room where she finally regained consciousness. Her team's doctor insisted she stay out of the water for a few days while his colleagues monitored her vitals. The swimmer supported her teammates from the poolside and cheered them on for victory. Meanwhile, her doctor has determined the cause of her fainting and blacked out the events in the pool. Shallow water blackout, the doctor announced while reviewing Naomi's test results. He explained that the phenomenon is a loss of consciousness because the brain is low on oxygen and carbon dioxide. 
Since an optimal level of carbon dioxide normally prompts the body to search for oxygen, a deficiency will result in the person passing out. Due to lack of oxygen, although the experience was scary for Naomi, she was fortunate that her trainer took care of her. Disclaimer. In order to protect the privacy of those depicted, some names, locations, and identifiers have been changed and are the product of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to actual events, locations, or persons living or dead is purely coincidental.